Hey Calvary, my name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in for today's Word for the Day. I really enjoy being a part of this. Hope that you guys enjoy this as well and hope that if this is a, an encouragement, a help, uh, an inspiration to you that you share this uh, with your friends uh, and just get the word out that way. You know, as we jump into uh, our passage of Mark today, I have a question for you. And I'd ask you to raise your hand because I'm a youth pastor, but I can't actually see you, so you're just going to have to acknowledge a different way. But have you ever felt like an outcast, an, an outsider, someone that was maybe forgotten in a social setting? Um, and and I, I'm sure that there are many of you watching today that have felt that way. And, and that kind of idea summarized most of my teenage years and even preteen years. I felt like an outsider. I felt like an outcast. I felt isolated and every area, every situation, every setting I was in from sports to extracurriculars uh, and even at times church at first I felt this way. And this is, this is hard, and, and I know that I'm not alone in this. There's plenty of teenagers that feel isolated, that feel like outcasts. Uh, I know because in the last 10 years of working with student ministry, I've connected with a ton of students with this as their background. But, but what for, was hard for me is, is that for so long, I felt like I didn't have a place to connect. I didn't have a place to belong. I didn't have someone besides my family who were supposed to care about me, who I actually felt went out of their way to care about me. But then I started to learn about the heart of God. I started to learn about the Father heart of God and how this was displayed and modeled through the words and the actions of Jesus. And I read passages like Mark and really began to understand them. So I want to share Mark uh, chapter 2 with us today. Mark chapter 2, starting in verse 13, it says, And he, that is Jesus, went out beside the sea, and all the crowds were coming to him, and he was teaching them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he reclined at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, and there were many that followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with the sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners." See, this was incredibly comforting and inspirational to me because it showed me the inclusive, caring, compassionate heart of God. And we, we may not see that right away as we sit here in our 21st century worldview and setting. But back then, we have to understand the setting that they were in. Tax collectors were the utmost of the outcast, the, the, the disliked, the hated of their culture. Because, see, they took Jewish people, the Roman government, that is, took Jewish people, recruited them to go and collect taxes on behalf of Rome of their own people. So you had this, this element where people thought, hey, they've betrayed us, they've sold us out, they're stabbing us in the back for collecting taxes against their friends and family for the Roman government. But on top of this... Tax collectors would commonly over-collect and keep the difference. They would go out and, and profit off of collecting taxes of their own people. And here Jesus shows up, and he goes and calls one of them to be a disciple. He goes and, and spends time with them, socializes with them, eats with them, spends quality time with the sinners, the outcasts, the, the left behind, the isolated, the broken, the sinful. And this obviously frustrated and angered the religious people, but it also should be an inspiration and encouragement to us. Because see, Jesus shows us here that, that he is willing to get in the moment with the people that, that society may leave behind, that society may say are unimportant, insignificant, worthless. Jesus finds value and purpose in. So you think that this, this passage shows us three really big things uh, for our life today here in 2020. First is that there is no one outside the grace of Jesus. If you're watching this, chances are you are already a follower of Jesus. If you're not, man, thanks for, for watching these. Thanks for growing. Thanks for learning more about who Jesus is. 
Um, but if you're already a follower of Jesus, understand that your friends, your family, your co-workers that you go, man, they are so far away from where God wants them to be. They would be the last person that I would expect to show up in church. Understand that, that they're not outside the grace of God. They're not outside of the boundaries of who Jesus can redeem and rescue and restore into the life that he has planned for them. So don't stop sharing. Don't stop inviting. Don't stop having those conversations about the good news of Jesus with your friends because there's no one outside the grace of God. The second thing this shows us is that we need to be regularly confronting our own sinfulness and brokenness. See, part of the reason that the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were so frustrated and aggravated at Jesus when he would spend time with these sinners is because they had created this, this divide, this container, to where you have the sinners over here, the, those being the tax collectors, the, the outcasts, the prostitutes, the people that were shunned by society, and you have these over here, the righteous, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees. These were, the, you know, the scribes and the people that were perfect. When in reality, we are all broken. We are all sinful people. Romans tells us that all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short. There is none worthy, no, not one, Scripture tells us. So for us, no matter how long we've been following Jesus, we need to be regularly confronting the fact that we have sin within us. We have brokenness. We have rebellion. We have pride. We have whatever it may be. We have sin that, that is in us that we need to be regularly confronting, taking to Jesus as that great physician who heals and restores us from our sin. And the third thing this shows us is that Jesus transforms lives. Levi, the tax collector there, becomes a disciple of Jesus, helps start the, the early church and, and spread the movement of Christianity around the globe. Countless other people who were broken and forgotten by society were restored, redeemed, healed, uh, set out on mission by Jesus because Jesus can transform and change our life. But the way that we do that is by confronting the brokenness within us and taking that before Jesus and saying, hey, will you heal this? Will you fix this so that I can be made whole in you? Our prayer today is that, that you would go to Jesus, that you would find your identity, your belonging, your purpose in following him so that he can change and transform your life. This is your word for the day. Hope that it's an encouragement to you. We'll see you tomorrow.